Hello, welcome to another episode of Wasting Time with Sir Isla. Today, we are going to discuss structure analysis, prefixes, suffixes, and root words. Why do we need to learn all about this? The larger your vocabulary, the more successful you're likely to be in school and in your career. This lesson explains a particular tool for increasing your vocabulary. Using the parts of a word to unlock its meaning. This lesson presents common Latin word parts, their meanings, and useful English words that come from them. Now, how will knowing common word parts that appear in English could help us? Number one. Figure out the meaning of many new words. Number two, it could also help us remember the meaning of words. Number three, it could help us recognize families of words that, can, that are based on the same word parts. Number four, we can all be better spellers. And number five, it is to expand your vocabulary. So go in, eh? First, let us have an activity. How many words can you create from the root words in the middle of the circle by combining other word parts with them? Report. Revert, respect, export, comport, import, so on and so forth. Let us see what you can come up with this time. Now let us look at this word. Not counting the English based word establish how many prefixes and suffixes are there in the word below anti-disestablishmentarianism again anti-disestablishmentarianism let us see word structure analysis now, it is using the structure or parts of a word to figure out the meaning of that said word. Word parts help you understand and remember the meaning of a word. Compound words consist of two words put together, such as roommates, countertop, and mailbox. Some word parts come from the ancient Latin and Greek. And each of these word parts have its own special meaning. Let us talk about word parts, which is uh, the center of this lesson. We have three, and those are the prefixes, the roots, and the suffixes. What are prefixes? These are word parts that are attached at the beginning of a base or root word. Prefixes have meanings and they add their meanings to the meaning of the word in which they are attached. Now, what are roots? These are the base words to which other word parts are added or attached to. Each root word has a specific meaning. Often, a family of related words come from the same root word. An example of this is the Latin root word, ject which means to throw. So if we have the word eject, we have a throw out. Inject, throw in. And reject, throw back or refuse. In these three words, we can see that uh, the center, uh, central meaning of uh, the words is the word throw. Suffixes. They are added at the end of the base word. Some suffixes have specific meanings such as full, which is full of whatever the root word says, such as joyful, and or, 
means a person who does the root word says, such as inventor or the one who invents. Let's go back to talking about prefixes. Some prefixes create words that mean the opposite of the base word. And uh, some prefixes pertain to time. Other pertains to place or location, such as above or below. Still other prefixes indicate number of quantities. May that be mono for one, tri for three, etc. There are many prefixes, and it's helpful to group one that are similar and to pair one that are opposite in meaning. Prefixes that appear in more than one section below have more than one meaning. And uh, some common prefixes, such as they, are not included because they have several meanings. For example, they can mean many things, including to do or to make the opposite of. Deactivate means uh, the opposite of activate. Decode stands for the opposite of code. To remove or remove from, which is the other rise, or to, to remove the other of. And uh, the other one is deduct. And out of the plane or out of the plane depart or not part of something let us discuss the prefixes that mean not negative prefixes are among the most commonly used prefixes when they are added to words they create a meaning that means the opposite of the base word or the root word for example Adding the prefix on to the word kind of creates the opposite word. Example is unkind, which is, of course, the opposite of the word kind. There are four negative prefixes. Of all prefixed words, the prefix un appears in a roughly one quarter of them. Example, number one, un, unhappy, unsafe. Undo, unwrap, unbutton. Number two, none. Non stop, non fiction, non drinker, non fat, non verbal. Three, this. Disagree or disagreement, dissimilar, dislike, disable, disobey. Four, in. Incorrect, indirect, inactive. Injustice, inhuman. It can also appear as uh, ill, im, or ear, as in illegal, immortal, impossible, and irresponsible. And we can uh, notice that all of these prefixes can mean the opposite of the word in which they are attached. Certain prefixes give you helpful clues about where something is located or occurs. Earlier, you learned that the prefix in means not. It also has a second meaning. It means in or into or inside of something. For example, the word inhale means to breathe in. One meaning of the prefix x is out, which means to Exhale means to breathe out. Inhale, breathe in. Exhale, breathe out. We have here in, which means in or into. And the words inhale include income ingredient. E, X, which means out or away, and we have the words exhale, exit, expire, exception, and expel. The third one is pro, which means forward or forth. We have the word progress, proceed, project, and protrude. Number four is re, which means back, and we have the words return, react, refund, Recede, retreat. 
And the number five, we have the word sub, which means below or under. Subway, submarine, subcommittee, and subdue. Number six, we have the word super, or over, or above. And we have the words supervise, superhighway, superior, and supreme. Number seven is inter, which means between. Interrupt, internet, interfere, interject. Number eight, we have the prefix tele, which means far or distant. Example is telephone, television, telemarketing. Number nine is around. For the prefix circum, and we have the words circumference, circumstance, circumnavigate. And uh, number 10, we have the prefix trans, which means across or through. We have uh, the words transfer, translate, transparent, and transfusion. There are also other important prefixes. Notice that some prefixes have opposite meanings and that they are paired. Notice that some prefixes have more than one spelling. Also, notice that there are additional different meanings to three prefixes you met earlier, and those are pro, re, and x. We have pro, which means for or in favor of. And we have uh, the words pro-life, pro-choice, pro-war, and pro-American. Number two, we have mal or miss, which means bad or wrong. Malnutrition, malpractice, misfortune, and misplace. Number three, we have bene or you, which means good or well. The words benefit, benign, eulogy, euphemism, euphoria, and also we have anti or anti and contra, which means of opposed to or against. We have uh, the words anti-war, antibiotic, contraceptive, and contradict. For number five, we have co, which can appear as call, com, or con. It means together or with. And we have the words co-worker, collaborate, communicate, and connect. Number six, we have ray or again or to do it again. We have the words repeat, rewrite, redo, review, and remarry. And number seven, X, which means former. We have ex-wife, ex-employee, and ex-president. Number eight, we have pre, which means before. And we have the uh, words predict, pretest, premature, and precede. Number nine, we have the word post, which means after or later. And we have the words post-test, postpone, post-season, and post-war. And number 10, we have hyper, which means too much or excessive. And we have the words hyperactive, hypersensitive, hyperventilated. Root words are fun, and they give you the power to unlock and remember hundreds or even thousands of words. Roots are the base words that prefixes and suffixes are added to. Once you know the meaning of the root word, you have the key that opens up the whole set of English words that comes from it. Here's an example of how it works. Suppose that you learn that the Latin root scrib or script means to write. The two similar spellings are just variations of the same word, so they are just the same. If you know the meaning of the root to write, you can see the connection between the root and the word scribble. 
what's a script or a manuscript. These words refer to the handwriting or something that's written down. Now, what type of products are made by a manufacturer that named its brand Scripto? Pens and mechanical pencils, tools for writing. If a gravestone is inscribed with the name of the person who has died, what has been done? The person's name has been curved or written in stone. What about some harder words that have these roots? Can you use the context and the meaning of the root word to figure out the meaning of the words conscription and conscriptorium? And I will introduce to you a handful of helpful root words. Number one, we have od, which means to hear. And we have the words audible, auditorium, audience, and audiovisual. Number two, we have uh, the root word auto, which uh, means the self. And in this one, we have the words automobile, autograph, autonomy, and autocrat. Number three, we have uh, bio, which means life or living. In this one, we have the words biology, biography, biopsy, and bionic. Number four, we have cred. It means belief or faith. And we have the words credit, incredible, credentials, and credulous. Number five is dict. It means to say, to speak, or to tell. And we have dictionary, dictate, indicate, and predict. Number six, as we talked about earlier, we have Object, which means toss or throw and we have the words reject eject dejected and projectile number seven we have the word root word menu which means hand make or do and uh, we have the words manufacture manual manicure and manuscript Number eight, we have uh, meet or miss, which means to send or to put. And we have the words remit, transmit, emission, and the word mission. Number nine, we have pell or pulse, which means to push or drive. And we have the word repel and compel, expulsion, and propeller. Then we have port, which means to carry, and we have the words portable, import, export, deport, and support. Number 11, we have the word spec or speed, which means to see or look, inspect, spectacle, despise, and circumspect. For number 12, we have the word track, which means to pull or draw. And we have uh, a track, contract, tractor, and traction as an example of this root word. Number 13, we have ben, vin, or vent, which means to come. Examples of this are prevent, event, Convene and intervention. Number 14, we have twist or turn. And uh, words like convert, controversial, introvert, and extrovert are an example of these root words. We also have uh, vid, view, and vis which means to see or look. Examples of this are visible, review, video disc, vision, and revise. It's hard to earn money. Suffixes. A 
as a fix is a word part that is added at the end of the base or root word. In the dictionary, when suffixes appear as entry words, they have a dash in front of them. The dash reminds you that something comes before them. The first one is uh, the suffixes that indicate nouns. This, uh, this means a state of, condition of, or quality of whatever the base word or root word indicates. First one is ANS and ENS, such as reliance, dependence. We also have DOM, freedom, or the state of being free. HOOD, such as adulthood, or the state of uh, being an adult. ET or E, which means, uh, which has the words maturity, the state or condition of being mature, and honesty. The quality of being honest and the if such as relative or the state of being related meant and we have the word retirement or the condition of being retired ness such as kindness which is the quality of being kind and the ship such as friendship which is the state or condition of being friends. We also have shun, shun, and yon. And we have the words isolation, to isolate, suspension, to suspend, and last we have tude, and we have the word solitude, which is the quality of being solitary or alone. person who does the root word indicates. Er and or, we have reader, the one who reads, inventor, the one who invents. And uh, ist, such as soloist, the one who does the solo. Two are suffixes that indicate verbs and means to make whatever the base word indicates. We have eight, and uh, we have the word automate, which means to make automatic. If I liquefy or to make as liquid, socialize for ice, and uh, N for chip and, or to make cheap. Number three, there are also suffixes that indicate an adjective. For example, this suffixes means full of whatever the base word indicates. First one, colorful. For full, which means full of color. Us and use, joyous, for full of joy. Eight, for fortunate, which means full of fortune. And e, for roomy, which means full of room. This suffixes mean relating to or pertaining to whatever the base word indicates. Al for musical, pertaining to music. Ik for comic, pertaining to uh, comedy. Ish or childish, which pertains to being a child. And if for corrective, which relates or pertains to being correct. Other adjective uh, suffixes we have able or able, which means able to be or to do whatever the root word says. We have the word reasonable or being able to make a reason of, and sensible, which means to make sense out of something, and less, which means without, homeless means without a home. For the other helpful suffixes, we have li and ili, which means like, or in the manner of. We have friendly and sloppily for this. Ology, which means the study or science of whatever the root word says. Biology, psychology. And ism, which means the philosophy or belief in whatever the root word says. And we have ter terrorism and communism. 
Thank you and uh, let us see each other again for our next lesson. And goodbye.